This video is sponsored by Ground News. How does a pilot lose control of their plane almost immediately after takeoff? That was the question people were asking on August 25th, 2001. A small aircraft carrying nine people appeared to lose control seconds after lifting off the ground. Despite this being a rather small plane, the accident drew a lot of attention, given who was on board the aircraft. You see, August 25th, 2001 is remembered by those in the music industry as a deeply tragic day. The world lost one of the most promising and rising performers and vocalists of the time. Today, we are going to gain an understanding as to how this plane was lost. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. In this modern day, we are bombarded with news constantly. On social media, television, wherever, we see news stories when we wake up, when we go to bed, when we're at work. Wouldn't it be good to get to the bottom of these stories, especially the ones that really matter to you? Well, Ground News has got you covered. Ground News feeds you the world's events so that you can see the background of each source. Ground News allows you to see bias, factuality, and ownership ratings for each news outlet reporting on a story. Not only can this give you a more diverse intake of the news, but it really puts things into perspective when it comes to the information we consume. That's why they highlight blind spots in the news so you can see who is actually reporting the news and who is just twisting the truth. Ground News gives you access to some intuitive features such as the map function, allowing you to more easily follow international news and events. I've used Ground News to read up more on a recent aviation disaster in Nepal, and there are a ton of sources here. So why not try it out yourself? Download the Ground News app, use my referral link at the top of the description or in the pinned comment. Alternatively, go to ground.news breakdown and try it out today. Support an independent news platform striving for more transparency in our modern world. Thank you to Ground News for sponsoring this video. Before we unpack how the accident unfolded, let's set the scene here and give a bit of background as to how this flight came into existence and how such a high profile group of passengers ended up on this tiny plane. Aaliyah Dana Horton, or just commonly known as Aaliyah, was a much loved singer and performer. She was only 22 years old when she died. In the final years of her life, she erupted onto the music scene in the R&B genre. In her rising success, she collaborated with producers such as Timbaland and performed alongside such legends as Gladys Knight. In fact, Aaliyah was Knight's niece. In 1994, at age 14, she produced her first album, which received two platinum awards. Aaliyah would go on to produce two more albums in 1996 and 2001. Her success earned her the title of Princess of R&B. In between that time, if music success wasn't enough, she launched an acting career in 1997, where she starred in two feature films, in 2000 and posthumously in 2002 respectively. Her third album, simply titled Aaliyah, released in 2001 to a highly positive critical reception. Four days before her death on August 21st, 2001, Aaliyah appeared on Black Entertainment Television and announced the filming of her latest music video for the song titled Rock the Boat. She announced that she would be traveling to the Bahamas to shoot the video. Sure enough, the following day, Aaliyah and her entourage chartered a small plane and arrived in the Bahamas, specifically traveling to Marsh Harbor on the island of Great Abaco. They were expected to stay there for a total of four nights. In the following days, they filmed Aaliyah's portions of the music video. In fact, the production team wrapped up Aaliyah's parts one day earlier than anticipated. Instead of staying in the Bahamas for the fourth night, once wrapping up production in the afternoon of August 25th, Aaliyah and her team made arrangements to travel back to the United States early. The rest of the production team stayed in the Bahamas to finish the video. They turned up at Marsh Harbor Airport to charter another flight. The passengers included Aaliyah herself, her own personal bodyguard, her makeup artist, hairdresser, two executives from her music label, and two personal friends. They contracted with a small charter airline known as Black Hawk International Airways. Black Hawk specialized in airplane rentals, leasing, and charters. They were not a typical airline that you would usually fly with. They operated a fleet of small aircraft, and amongst those planes was a twin piston engine propeller plane called the Cessna 402. Cessna as a company has been a mainstay in the aviation industry for nearly 100 years now. 
Cessna is known for producing smaller, albeit incredibly popular aircraft for all types of applications. Flight training, cargo transport, and of course, passenger transport. The Cessna 402 first flew in the 1960s, and was the continuation in their line of twin-engine planes. That day, the plane registered as November 8097 Whiskey was available to take the pop star and her team back to Miami. The plane was supposed to be available from 4.30 that afternoon, but there were delays in the schedule, and the plane did not arrive in Marsh Harbor until 6.15 in the evening. When the plane did arrive at Marsh Harbor, there was a push to get things moving. The passengers wanted to be in Miami that evening. Aaliyah herself was believed to have been exhausted after filming the last few days, and actually had reservations about getting on the small plane. More on that in just a moment. During the delay on the ground, she was reported to have taken some rest. In fact, sources about what happened in this time would seem to indicate she was actually slipped a sedative. It's reported that she was actually carried onto the accident flight asleep. The flight would be piloted by Captain Luis Morales, age 30. He began his flight training when he was just 14 years old, but had only been an employee of Black Hawk for just two days by the time of the accident. In his time as a pilot, he had accumulated over 1,000 flight hours in total. At least that was what was indicated in his records. The thing is, this pilot was certainly questionable. The investigation later found out that he falsified not only the flight hours in his logbook, but also the certification necessary to command this plane. Additionally, he had falsified documents to obtain his FAA license. That was not the only thing found out about the pilot. Toxicology results revealed that he had recently consumed alcohol before the accident flight, and cocaine was even found in his system. But let's remain on topic here. Investigators, when they were later looking through the wreckage of the accident plane, couldn't find a very key piece of evidence which will lead onto one of the big aspects of this crash we're about to discuss. What was missing in the wreckage was weight and balance documentation. The pilot in command is responsible for the safe operation of their plane. Part of that includes ensuring that the correct performance calculations have been made. A document should be produced detailing these calculations. When investigators later looked over the wreckage, they never found such document. There is no evidence that these calculations were made. So, why is this important? Well, to begin with, despite the lack of recorded pre-flight performance calculations, according to multiple sources, Captain Morales did notice his passengers had brought a lot of luggage with them, and that the plane was going to be overweight. This is a very key point of interest here. When Aaliyah first arrived in the Bahamas a few days previously, they flew in on board a larger aircraft, reportedly a Fairchild Metroliner. The Cessna 402 was a smaller plane, but they still needed to carry the same amount of people and cargo back home. You might now already be able to see where this is going. Originally, the passengers had scheduled a slightly larger Cessna 404. However, the operator Black Hawk changed this to the smaller 402. The Cessna 402 has space for two pilots and six passengers for a maximum capacity of eight occupants. Though one pilot can easily fly the plane, allowing for a seventh passenger in the front. The problem is Aaliyah's team, including herself, consisted of eight people. So even filling the co-pilot seat in the cockpit, they were still short of one seat. This apparently did not matter on the day, and the flight was booked anyway. This was only the beginning of the problems. Captain Morales supposedly noticed this, the story goes is that he warned the Ilya team that the plane was overweight and it would be unsafe to fly like that. The flight's passengers, however, were insistent on making the trip, and Captain Morales conceded and agreed to go ahead with the flight anyway. I should absolutely point out here that it is believed by many that this was not a decision taken by Ilya herself. She was known to have a fear of flying, and as mentioned earlier in this video, she already had reservations about the small aircraft and protested getting on the plane because it was overweight. It is the opinion of many that there was motivation amongst her team to get her on the flight, which led to her being drugged to fall asleep. Furthermore, at the end of the day, it is the captain's call to fly. He conceded to the demands of the passengers for reasons unknown. Although many have speculated that because traces of alcohol and cocaine were found in his body, this may have swayed his decision-making somewhat. 
Regardless, to lay it out bluntly, the plane was overweight. To break down the specifics, according to the accident report, the Cessna 402 has a maximum takeoff weight of 6,300 pounds, or 2,857 kilograms. The maximum takeoff weight refers to not the weight the plane is carrying, but the total gross weight of the plane as a whole. People, luggage, fuel, and actual weight of the plane combined. It was estimated by the investigation that, in this case, the weight of the plane, the nine occupants exceeding the recommended eight, the cargo and baggage of the passengers, and the fuel that was in the tanks, came in at 941 pounds, or 426 kilograms over the maximum takeoff weight limit. To further note, it is likely that the actual weight of the plane was thought to be even greater than this. One piece of luggage was never found at the crash site and was not factored into this calculation. But the plane being overweight was just the beginning of the issue. This doesn't explain why the plane crashed. The distribution of that weight is a critical factor to know before we actually look at the events of the very short accident flight. The way the passenger's luggage was loaded onto the plane and where certain passengers sat in the cabin meant that the pilot attempted to fly with a center of gravity well aft of where it should have been for a safe flight. Most of the plane's weight was in the rear of the plane. The accident report even details how witnesses saw the two heaviest passengers, weighing around 300 pounds each, seating themselves in the rear of the cabin. Not only was the plane overweight by the time everyone was on board, but it was also excessively tail-heavy. The time was 6.50 in the evening that fateful day. The nine passengers boarded the small Cessna plane, preparing for their flight back to Miami. Captain Morales was going to fly VFR, using a flight plan without much guidance from controllers. The journey to Miami should have taken around one hour. 6.45. The plane was ready for departure. Positioned on runway 27, the west-facing side, Captain Morales powered up his plane and began the takeoff run. The plane would use little over half of the runway to accelerate to takeoff speed. Captain Morales angled his plane into the air and immediately experienced difficulty in controlling the aircraft. In the plane's very short flight, the aircraft peaked at an altitude under 100 feet above the runway. As the plane was highly unbalanced, the Cessna pitched into a high nose-up attitude. The left wing began to drop as not enough lift was being generated by the wings to sustain the excessive weight of the aircraft. This led into a left bank and the nose dropped. In the following seconds, the plane fell to the ground. In a nose down left bank attitude, the Cessna crashed into the ground in a marshy area just beyond the end of the runaway. A fire consumed the wreckage of the aircraft. Eight of the plane's nine occupants were dead, killed when the plane crashed. There was one initial survivor, Aaliyah's own bodyguard, Scott Gallen. He was found by first responders, but he passed away shortly after the crash. The investigation put the accident down to multiple factors. An overweight plane, improper distribution of the weight, an unqualified pilot, falsified documents, and poor airline management. These were all factors that compounded against one another and led to disaster that evening. Investigators looked into the operator Black Hawk International Airways. What they found were multiple violations of air safety. The airline had been ordered to pay thousands of dollars in fines before the accident. In regard to the accident plane, it would appear that there was one pilot who was authorized to fly it. That person was not Captain Luis Morales. In addition to these findings, there was another factor that was mentioned by the investigation, and this was the high temperature at the time of the accident. It was a hot day in the Bahamas. It's well documented that high temperatures affect aircraft performance. This is because higher temperatures create regions of air that are less dense in the simplest of terms. Less dense air means less air molecules for the plane's wings to interact with. This translates into a lower lift output. So on hot days, planes tend to require longer takeoff runs to generate that same lift when compared to colder days. It's even been known in the hottest of climates that airports even temporarily shut down due to this. Investigators believe that with the outside air temperature that day being in the region of 30 degrees Celsius, the plane could have had reduced performance, further contributing to the loss of control. There is one final thing I'd like to mention about the plane, as it's highlighted in the accident report. 
It's worth addressing, and it's to do with the potential configuration of the plane. In the wreckage of the aircraft, investigators discovered something rather unusual. The trim settings for the aileron, rudder, and elevator appeared to be selected in positions out of normal range for takeoff. Furthermore, the fuel selector switches were also set to abnormal positions. Though this could perhaps indicate another explanation for the loss of control, investigators stopped short of making that connection. As to quote the accident report on this, impact damage may have changed the pre-impact setting, thereby rendering the observed positions as unreliable, though this could be an indication that the appropriate checklists were not followed. The probable cause of this crash was put down to weight, as we've already discussed. In the end, the loss of Aaliyah's plane devastated the music industry, especially the R&B scene. Tributes came in from the likes of Beyoncé and, of course, her aunt Gladys Knight. The music video for Rock the Boat was finished and released. Today, Aaliyah is remembered fondly and revered by her fans. In fact, according to sources, a posthumous album containing unreleased music and vocals of hers is expected to be released at some point in the future. Following the accident, investigators made recommendations that called for stricter rules for air carriers that operate in the Bahamas, and that they comply with the higher standards set out by aviation authorities. A big thank you once again to Ground News for sponsoring this video. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. This was a highly requested one for quite some time. I'm glad I finally got around to it. Let me know your thoughts on this one in the comments below. When making this video, I made sure to take some time to listen and appreciate some of Aaliyah's music. You can actually watch the video for the song she was filming for on YouTube, it's available to watch, alongside some behind the scenes videos that were also released. I'm going to move swiftly on because I would like to keep this outro rather short. So, anyway, it is that time of the week once again where I must take a moment to thank my amazing patrons over on Patreon for their generous support to the channel. Their names are scrolling on the screen right now, so if you do see your name here, a massive thanks to you. Shout out this week to Katie Ling, who has actually informed me that it is her birthday when this video goes out, so happy birthday, Katie. If you yourself would like to support the channel further, or even get your name featured at the end of the next video, you can join the Disaster Breakdown Patreon from just £1 per month, and the link to that will be in the pinned comments below. All patrons get early access to all new content two days before it goes out publicly on YouTube. If you would like to follow my personal Twitter page, that too will be linked in the pinned comment. That is all from me this week. Have a great day, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!